You've dealt with some different aspects of blueberry production. Uh, now we mo move over to the dark side of blueberry production. So to the, uh, the side that people don't like talking about, but uh, the insect uh, predation we have on the plants and on the fruit. And uh, you know, I've, I've spoken to this group uh, the last several years. I've done it from a more of a conventional perspective. What I'd like to do today is talk to you about insect management from an organic perspective and, and, and address some of the organic tools and some of the organic strategies that we use with, with blueberries. But if you ask uh, me what I thought the top five insects were with blueberry production, and uh, my, my opinion's a little bit different. So uh, I, I think w one of the, the, the bigger problems we have is this spotted wing drosophila. And you've heard me talk about the spotted wing drosophila in Kentucky, but uh, I think just the potential of it, you know, infesting crops, getting crops rejected, you know. Uh, right now, when we send um, uh, blueberries out, there is a zero tolerance for insects in, in the fruit. That means one larva in a tractor trailer load is all you need to reject that entire tractor trailer load. So it's, it's very, very low. Now, if you don't go through USDA grading and things like that, if you're selling your berries at, at you know, farmer's markets and things like that, you don't have those same standards and it's a very different situation. But when you, when you are shipping your, your berries around, uh, you do have to adhere to that, that zero tolerance. Just wanted to point out, uh, and, and this may be more information than you want, but there was an excellent review article that came out last summer, and it really summarized all the research over the last few years with spotted wing drosophila. And if you're really interested in this, if you've had problems with this pest, you're looking for new innovative solutions with this pest, this is a great article uh, that, that recently came out, and it talks about the invasion biology. And you notice all the authors there are Europe because Europe's going through the same thing that we're going through. That the spotted wing drosophila, although it originally came from Eastern Asia, it has spread to uh, North America, it has spread to Europe. So it, it has really moved around. And, and this is really a worldwide problem. It's not just a, uh, a Metcalf County problem here. So the world's much bigger than Metcalf County, I hate to say. <laughs> So I just wanted to point that out. This is the third year we've had this pest in the state. Uh, 2012, we did pick it up in a few traps in a few locations, but it wasn't a problem. We really didn't see it as a problem anywhere in the state. But since 2013, it's been a recurring problem. And we've been trapping for this insect in a lot of commercial uh, plantings, blue, blueberry fields, uh, apple orchards, grape vineyards, strawberry fields, blackberry plantings. We've been trapping for it a lot across the state. One thing I noted just in the last few years, if you look at the dates when we trapped the first insects, and they've been getting earlier, and that's very important because some of our crops have had no damage because the crops have been completely picked before we see it becoming active in the year. But now we're starting to see that it's becoming earlier. I don't know why this is. You know, are, are we just getting uh, larger populations in the fall and it just creates more, more insects in the spring so some of them can come out earlier. But now that we're starting to see some individuals that become active uh, in May, you know, that, that, that's important. That, that means that there's the potential that this insect can affect strawberry production, you know, with June bearing strawberries. It can also affect blueberry uh, production more. Uh, if you look just at when it was active in uh, 2013 and 2014, it was really just the latest uh, 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 maturing varieties of blueberries that, that were really susceptible to it. Now, this past year, it, it was early enough it could affect uh, all the blueberry uh, varieties. So, the, the, and this is a slide I've used in the past, and I'm, I'm sticking to it, uh, but I, I tend to rate the different small fruit crops, the thin skin crops, in terms of their susceptibility to spotted wing drosophila. 
And if you look at that list, the, the two that I have as uh, the highest risk are still fall, red raspberries, and blackberries. Very thin-skinned. Uh, they're ripening at the time that we see the peak populations of spotted wingersophila in the field. Uh, so the, these are the two crops that you know, growers absolutely have to be managing if they're growing these crops uh, commercially. Uh, and what that means is for a lot of these growers that during the harvest period, they need to be spraying at least weekly to control these, this insect. And we do have organic sprays. I'm going to talk about some of the organic sprays we have for this pest. But it, it, it takes a lot of management with, with the raspberries and the blackberries. If you look at blueberries, I have it as low to moderate. It's, it's not as susceptible as those later crops. One is we, we tend to have lower populations of the spotted winged drosophila during that harvest period for the blueberries. And blueberries are not as thin-skinned as raspberries and blackberries. And so I think just w with the, the structure of the berry, it's not quite as susceptible to attack. It's not as easy for that female to, to uh, cut into it with her egg layer as it is with those other crops. Strawberries, we've yet to see any infestation in our June-bearing strawberries. People that have the ever-bearing strawberries, yeah, they, they have serious problems later in the summer, but the June bearings have escaped damage. Grapes, we, we've seen some varieties that have had some serious grape problems. In other states, they talk about it being a, a peach pest. Uh, again, I've been out to a number of orchards trying to investigate this when they've had problems with maggots in their fruit, and, and it has not been spotted wing that has, has caused the problem. So that's sort of how, how, how I rate the, the different uh, crops. So how would you know if you had fruit that have been attacked by spotted wing drosophila? There's a number of, of, uh, of signs. Um, one of the first things is that, you know, when, when the spotted wing drosophila lays its egg in the fruit, and it's going to be a fruit that's already begun to turn color, and it's begun to soften, that's when it becomes susceptible. She sticks her egg underneath the skin. The egg hatches within about one day. So a very short period of time between egg laying and egg hatch. Once the egg hatches, that, that, that uh, I know I'm not supposed to call them maggots, but the maggots get in there and, and they start tunneling around. And you're going to get that, that early wrinkle, wrinkling and softening of the fruit. So you're going to get that, that premature wrinkling of the fruit. Uh, you're going to have soft spots on the fruit. You know, it's going to be destroying the tissue underneath the skin. Uh, you're, with some of the fruits like raspberries and blackberries, you, when you pick those fruits that are infested, if you look at the stem, it looks water-soaked. It doesn't look like a, uh, the, the, the stem end when you pick it like a healthy fruit. It doesn't look dry. It looks watery and looks like it's already starting to break down on some of those. Post-harvest uh, uh, handling of your fruit is incredibly important. And um, yeah, I, 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 let me go ahead and mention it because I want you to hear it a second time so it really sin sinks in. But you know, when you pick your blueberries, they need to be co cooled down. And so you know, pick them, grate them quickly, get them right into a cooler. You know, don't, don't let them sit around for a half a day because if it only takes a day for that egg to hatch, you know, an extra half a day is a, is a long time with this insect. It's all due to the temperature. And the, cooling them down below, get, if you can get your fruit down below 45 degrees quickly, that is going to arrest all development. So what I mean by that is the eggs will not hatch, the larvae will, will not feed and grow below that 45 degrees. The colder you get it, uh, there's a possibility of killing them out. So if you get it below 34 degrees, so we're getting very close to freezing, uh, and if you hold it, it, held it at 34 degrees for three days, research at NC State has shown you can get 90% mortality of the eggs and 90% mortality of the older larvae at 34 degrees. You know, if, if you held your fruit at 32 degrees, you know, the freezing temperature for water, it's not going to freeze your fruit. You can actually super cool blueberries just a little bit uh, 
possibly get them down to 31 before they freeze. And you know that, that's how we, we kill uh, spotted winged Drosophila colonies. So if you can get that temperature, and that temperature, keep in mind, it has to penetrate into the center of that, that bulk mass of the fruit. So just because the outer ones are cold doesn't mean the ones, you know, if you have a 10-pound a, a bag of blueberries, it need, the blueberries in the center need, need to be at that temperature as well. Well, she, she's probably uh, probing around, and she's, you know, when the skin gets soft enough that there isn't that hard fruit underneath it, she can actually push it through there and, and get her eggs laid underneath the skin. She, she lays her eggs underneath the skin. The other fruit flies, we have many other fruit fly species that look almost identical. Those lay their eggs on top of the surface of the fruit, not, not underneath. That's why this is such a, a, a significant pest for us. I, I think our strategy is to try and prevent the egg laying, prevent the larvae. And uh, I, the, what I was talking about as the refrigeration, that's more of a backup. You know, that's, that's a secondary tactic to, to, to help. You know, if, if you happen to get any egg laying in there, it's, it's gonna help. But our primary strategy is to prevent the female flies from ever laying eggs in the fruit. Now, how we do that, we're gonna talk about that. But uh, uh, that, that's our, 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 our uh, objective. Probably the last one is, is one of the most important ones. You're gonna see very poor shelf life if you have larvae in your fruit. Basically, they're gonna shrivel, they're gonna leak, uh, and within a week, you're gonna get these maggots exiting the fruit and crawling out all over things. And so, a very bad thing. Not only you as a grower, but if you're taking it to a co-op, it, it can give the, the whole co-op a bad name. So, because, I mean, you're all in this together. That's why it's a co-op.